Good evening boys and girls, welcome to Friday Night Club, a few new songs, and we're going to show a video for Garden Shed. Yes, I the boy. Creatures of a God and King, lift up your voice with us and sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh garden sun with golden beam, and silver moon with softer gleam.
before we go to our video, it's a great song. God, all about the Lord, holding on to us. Father, bless the boys and girls tonight. Thank you for another week of school and home learning. And we pray now, Lord, for the video as we think about the garden shed and some of the lessons we can learn. Amen. Here we go to the garden shed. Today I'm, I'm, I'm at my own house here and um, I've got a man cave. And a man cave is a man's pride and joy. Everyone has their own wee area where they keep stuff. Mine's a garden shed at the back. But this has been up a long time, and I noticed recently it was getting quite old, and it was starting to rot, so we've had to take some, replace, uh, instead of getting a new shed, it's still a good shed, a really good shed, but some of it was beginning to rot, and that's what happens. Um, we've taken lo lots of the rotten bits off, look. If you can see, look closely, this is, this is just, with one hand you can snap it off, it's just, it's just rotten. So it needs to replace or eventually it's going to fall down and, or it's going to leak, the water leaks, that's what happened. So that's all the old wood. I've got new wood, new nails, new screws. And look, you see inside, it's almost like a new shed again. That's a new, you able to use the same window, the same lights, the same electric. Cobwebs are, of course, grow everywhere. Parts of the floor had to be replaced. Um, some of the runners were still good. But this is all, all new. The other side here, it's it's still good. There's no problem. The roof's still good. I just uh, went up and just checked the roof and put some tape on it, etc. Uh, but the door here, a wee flap for the dog. The dog goes in right. That's a good a good door. But it made me think. Whenever we take, have to take all the brackets off, then I'll put up the shelves next. But there's a new wood. There's something oh, about new wood just fresh. New wood, it's a lovely smell, and of course it looks well too, and I thought, what's the application? Well, this this little shed is is a, a summer where I can store things, you can practically live in it, it's a part of the house just beside the house, but whenever I think about this shed, it reminds me of my life, it reminds me of my body, and also my heart, because as you get on in life, uh, you, things do need to be replaced, for example, your clothes, you can't wear the same clothes now as you're going to wear in 20 years time, but apart from the outside, you're going to change your shoes and your socks and your jumpers, uh, your your school uniform from primary school to high school but then whenever you think of your body and your heart that's the part even though it's all inside you'll find as you get older you'll have to go to maybe the doctor get your heart checked get your um, organs checked to make sure everything's working fine as you get older you start to get slower but this reminds me of uh, just like part of this needed to be replaced sometimes people get a new a new knee or a new part of their body but within all that there the part the, the center part of your body of course is your heart and the bible talks about um, God says, I will give you a new heart what I give you. Because whenever we are born into this world, we're born, believe it or not, something we can't see, but the evidence is all around us, and it's sin. And that is the part of us that separates us from God. It's the part of us that inclines us to do wrong, and maybe to be angry or cheeky or frustrated, all those things. And the Lord says, I will give you a new heart. And when he gives you a new heart, he gives you a new desire for living because in everything you'll want to do, you want to please God with your life. And I thought about these boards. While this shed still looks like a shed, it's still the same shed, but there are parts of it that needed to be fixed and put together to maintain the stability of the shed so that it's a good purpose for storing my, my coal, my sticks, my wood, and my fire lighters, my turf, and all my little bobs, bits and pieces. And of course, in the shed, it's got to be locked to keep it locked. Nobody can touch it. But I thought about the shed. It's lovely, it looks well. And that's like your body. It's so important to be healthy. And um, whenever you think, you, you, you feel yourself, if you don't watch what you eat, you may be starting to get sluggish. You start to get slowed down. And there are parts of your life that you have to be careful what you eat, what you say, what, what you do. In other words, because the Bible, your body for a Christian is called the temple. It's a place for a God lives and if God was coming to visit your house imagine Jesus contacted you and said I'm going to come and visit you would you clean your house would you clean your bedroom would you hoover it would you put away all the mess would you make your bed nice and neat would you get the best food in of course you would but God says your body 
Is your temple, your heart, is the place where I want to live and I want to correct it and protect it and look after it and all these things. Therefore, the garden said, it's something we own and we want to look after it because if we don't look after it, eventually the wood is going to rot and eventually the whole thing is going to fall down and it's going to collapse and that's going to be the end of the garden shed. I've been busy making some shelves. Come on, have a wee look at the shelves. The pride and joy. You see, there's no point in having a shed and then having everything lying in a, just a big pile because you can't find anything. So I'm all excited. I've got the walls all done, the roof secure, the floor's good, and now I put my shelves up. For example, if I want to find some paint, now that whenever the weather's good, the sun comes out, I'm going to get some fence paint and paint the outside of it to protect it. And of course, then if I'm going to clip my head, I need to know exactly where these are. So I'll put these here. I need to know where my watering can is to water the plants. Gloves, for example, gloves, whenever I go to find the gloves for the garden, and they need to know exactly where they are. Welly boots. It's always good to know where your wellies are because you can't walk everywhere in your slippers. For example, an extension lead, you need to know where this is. Ball, always good to have the football not too far away for basketball or football or we like to play some football. Tools. It's important you know where you keep your tools, your saw. Here's your drill bits. Keep them organized from the little little P1, little P1 ones. And then of course the P7s right up to here and beyond. And then uh, have them all organized, super organized. The lesson is very simple. It's about being organized in life. That's why school has got structure. You've got P1, P2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. A key stage one, key stage two, then you go to high school, where it's uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth year, then A levels, uh, sixth year, then university, or, or go to a tech to do a trade or whatever. So everything's planned out accordingly for your life as far as education goes. But I think I'm a garden shed, I need to have the shelves up, put everything on the shelves my sticks, my coal, my far lighters, my lawnmower, my power washer, uh, all of these tools. So when I walk into the, the shed, I know exactly where to go. And life, it's good to plan your life, but the first 16 years are easy, they're planned for you. But then after that, you need to start making decisions. What you're going to study, where you're going to work, what you're going to do. Then when you meet somebody later on, you start a relationship, you get married, you have family. That's the way life goes and life is structured when then that happens. But there's something that's very important here and it's God. And God likes to be part of your life. He likes to, you whenever you make decisions, to include God because life is all about God. Because God created this world for us to live in, to enjoy, but to enjoy God forever. But the danger is we can get so organized, we can forget about God and including the very purpose God has us here. To praise Him, to worship Him, to talk to Him, to learn about Him and to include Him in part of our lives. So sometimes we can get so focused on primary school and high school and planning just to go through this life and God says but I'm the one who gave you life and the Bible says if we've got Jesus we've got life but if we don't have the Lord Jesus we don't have life of course he's talking about everlasting life life forever with him uh, in heaven forever and ever so as I was uh, fixing my my shed the bits that were broken the bits that were rotten they had to be taken away and 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 fixed and replaced and that's like life whenever you make mistakes Fix the mistakes and move on with life. There's no point in me sitting in the shed and it's leaking and it's holes and, and uh, it's going to fall apart and, and lamenting and crying. No, you have to be honest. Be realistic. Fix it. Get back on with it. And uh, things can always get better. But I thought, it's like life. And I said, Lord, I don't want to live my life without you. I want you to be in my life every single day. But then, what are we going to do with the wee bits at the end here? There's all some good bits of wood. We can maybe make some smaller shelves. Yes, maybe make a wee shelf for Joanna. Shall we make shelves? So all the broken bits of wood here. And so I'm going to break these up with my hammer. The bigger bits, break them up, and then this will be perfect firewood. These little ones will help light the fire. The bigger ones will help burn the fire. And then so it'll all be destroyed at the end. So that's like whenever we do something wrong, we ask some, we tell our friend, I'm sorry for annoying you. Sorry for being bad, but ultimately whenever you tell God, when you do something wrong, whenever you sin, you say, Lord, I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. Immediately, God forgives you. And he says, I will never, ever remember that again. As far as the east is from the west, I will remove it. 
just like the old bits of wood. Once they're destroyed and burnt up, I will never need to worry about them again. I just need to focus on the good part, on the good part, on the good wood. So my next job now, once I break up the firewood, is to get the paintbrush and the paint in the garden shed so it looks nice and pretty for the summer. Great video, but the garden shed. Really enjoyed putting out the back of the garden shed. Here we go with another song. I'm in the
wonderful song found in the book of Proverbs. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths or make your path straight. Right, let's say a few things about the garden shed. Well really about the garden, and whenever we think of the garden shed, it's a place, it's for me it's like a man cave. It's a place I can go and keep all my tools. It's a place I can go to keep maybe some sweeties. Joanna might not be keeping a kitchen. She knows where they all are. But in my little man cave, I can hide things, keep things, and I know exactly what's there. But as you noticed in our, in our video, uh, whenever the garden sheds put up, it's beautiful, it's nice, it's fresh. But of course, with years of uh, weather beating on it, it becomes decayed, it begins to rot. And eventually, if it's not replaced, not fixed, then the whole thing's going to come tumbling down. So it's like life, it's so important to look after. So the garden said, when we think of the garden, and a garden, not everybody has a garden. Some houses don't have a garden, front or back, they don't have grass. Some have got pavement, some have got tarmac, concrete, pavers, grass, stones, all different types of gardens. So the back garden is a place where children, feel safe, it's your home, it's where you can take a ball, you can ride your bike and there's normally a fence, a perimeter around it so you know your neighbours where the boundaries are. So a garden's a place where parents can place their children and they know they're safe, they can play and they can feel a, a place where the, the children can be by themselves. So a garden, the Bible talks a lot about gardens. Garden's a wonderful place, it's a place of uh, tranquility, a place of peace, a place of thinking and, and people can go just relaxing, a place of chilling. A garden's also a place of life because quite often the garden, or whenever you think of the garden, it's a place, Joanna loves the springtime, she can put her wellies on, get her little trowels out and she can go to the shop uh, to, to buy some seeds and there she can plant some flowers or even some, over the years, we we'll have veggie patches. Uh, we lived in Australia, we planted sweet corn, all sorts of things. Just a little seed, you plant them in the ground, you cover them up, then you wait and you wait until you see the shoots coming. And that's life when you watch it, and it grows and develops all the different colours, shapes, sizes, smells. So the garden's a lovely place that reminds me of life. And people like to go, they like to just switch off from work, switch off from play, switch off from uh, busyness and they go into the garden to cut their grass and do their weeding, do their planting um, with a water and can their gloves. If it's a hot day, put their hat on and they can just totally chill out. And for some people going to the garden, it's as good as a nice holiday. It's especially on a lovely warm day. It's also a place where children love to play in their back garden. They can take their toys out and they can play ball. They can play with each other and have lots of fun. And in the garden, you'll sometimes find a garden shed. But in the Bible, the Bible talks many times about gardens. For example, the first garden we come across, of course, was the Garden of Eden. And whenever we think of the Garden of Eden, it's where um, God placed Adam and Eve, that was a place of perfection where the elephants could play with the dogs and the wolves could play with the sheep and the lions could play with the lambs. But then a serpent came, the devil, and deceived Eve, Adam and Eve. They disobeyed God. They took the forbidden fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. And as a result, sin entered the world. That's the whole message of the Bible. As by one man, sin entered the world and death by sin. And that's why there's so many problems in the world. That's why there's death in the world, destruction and big, big problems. All because of this one problem called disobedience. That's a very important garden. When God gave life, and because of man's disobedience, they brought death upon themselves. But God promised he would send his lovely son, the Lord Jesus, into the world to conquer death. And by him giving us life and death, he would give us life forever. And the Bible says, if you've got Jesus, you've got life. If you don't have the Lord Jesus in your heart, then you don't have life. The Garden of Eden, the Song of Solomon. Solomon was a king and he often talked about the garden. As a king, he would go into the garden, smell the roses, walk through the grass, walk through the flowers, and he would chill, he would relax. Solomon is known as the wisest man he ever lived. So quite often he would get his inspiration as he would walk 
through the garden. And he, talk, he says, I come into my garden or let us go into the garden. You'll often hear phrases just like that about the garden. And then we, the most special garden of all, and maybe it wasn't the most beautiful garden, but it was a, 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 it was a lovely scene whenever God uh, was fulfilling his promise because for thousands of years he promised he would send his son Jesus. Hundreds of years and now uh, Jesus comes into the garden of Gethsemane and that's where he's praying. Of course he asked his disciples to pray with him and they fell asleep. And while he's praying in the garden, he said, Lord, is there any other way to his father that you can take away this pain, that you can conquer sin? And God said to his son, there's no other way. You must go to the cross. And an angel come down. And the Bible says as Jesus was praying, his sweat became as great sweat drops of blood. And now the angel would comfort him. Then they arrested the Lord Jesus as he prayed. And they took him off to be crucified. And that's a story of the cross. The Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane is a very solemn place. The last place where Jesus was praying with his disciples comforting them. And that's when he was taken away and accused of being the Son of God, which he was. And he was put onto the, onto the cross and died for the sins of the world. That was God's plan. Now, when Jesus was on the cross, I was on his mind. And there came a point in my life when I realized that Jesus died for me to take away all my sin. And I just simply said, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. I'm so sorry for all my sin. Will you come into my life, into my heart? Will you save me? And at that moment, the Lord Jesus saved me and I became a child of God ready for heaven. I wonder if you ever prayed that prayer. If you ask God to forgive you, to save you and start living your life for Jesus. It's a wonderful life and I highly recommend it for you to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Then the garden said in the garden, we'll show the video, talked about the lessons, how at the start is new, it reminds you of life, the garden talks about life. The, new, the, the garden said a lovely new wood, it's fresh, it smells great, putting up the shells, all the tools into it, but eventually unless it's preserved, it's going to rot, it doesn't last forever, and eventually it's going to cave in. That's like life. Whenever we're born into this world, we're healthy, we're strong, we're fast, full of life, hardly ever get tired. But eventually as you get older, from primary school to high school and beyond, as you get older, you start to decay, your hair starts, if you're a boy, your hair starts to go, your teeth start to get slack, you start to get pains in your knee, in your back, oh my back, my knee, all these things. It's just, a, it's, a, it's like life. That's what and the Bible talks about. Uh, average life is 70 years old, but by reason of strength, if you're healthy and strong, you can live another 10 years or beyond that, which many people do. But we know, the point is, we're not here forever. You'll not find a garden set that was built 100 years ago. It's long gone, replaced with a new one. That's like life. Children become parents, become grandparents, and they move on. And new children are born, grandsons, great-grandsons, great-granddaughters. That's life. And there's only one thing that's important in life, as we thought about the shed and preserving it. Nothing is going to stop. The shed is going to die. It's going to rot. That's like life. One day we're going to die. But that's why it's so important to understand the meaning of life, the purpose of life. The purpose for me of life is as a child to glorify God and to enjoy God forever. I enjoy God every day. I want to enjoy him forever. That God may get the glory in everything we do. It's all about God. So life's not about being selfish. It's not about me. Life's about God and God shining through me. That's why the, the we shed, it's got a purpose for storing tools, for storing bikes, for hiding things, for putting things away from the storm, away from the rain, the bad weather. But the wee garden shed, it needs to be protected, looked after, cared for, locked the door closed, or the wind's going to come in. The, the glass needs to be put in the windows, the door needs to be kept shut. Or when the storm comes, and the wind and the rain's going to go in and destroy it. That's why when you become a Christian, you've got to guard your, your mouth and your eyes, all the gates. Your ear gate, your eye gate, your mouth gate, your hands, your feet, where you walk, what you touch, where you go, your thoughts. All these things must be protected so you can be preserved and be a good child of God to live for God and shine for God. What a challenge the wee garden shed was for me 
And every day I can walk into the garden shed, I can say, thank you, Lord, for life. That I can use these tools. I've got hands to use them, feet to walk with the lawnmower to push it. All these things, I to see and ears to hear. Sometimes we just take life for granted. But whenever they stop working, the wee eye you can't see, your ears you can't hear. Why as you get old, your eyes become dim. Your ears become hard of hearing. Maybe your speech becomes slurred. You start to get shaky. All these things, it's just life decaying and coming to a natural end. That's why it's so important to embrace the Lord Jesus, allowing him in, into your life and into your heart to save you, to take your sin all the way so that you can live and shine for God. That's the only purpose of this life is to accept Jesus. Most people choose to reject him, but I have chose to accept him. And I would urge you to do exactly the same. Don't leave it till you're big and till you're old because you can miss your opportunity Right now, the Bible says today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Your heart's soft, invite him in to take away your sin. What a change you will make, because the Bible says old things pass away. Behold, all things become new to the person, the new child in the Lord Jesus. Wonderful challenge. Right, Debs, do you like potatoes? Well, I have a potato quiz tonight. Yes! This is a spud, and we're going to decorate the potato. So you have to choose what you would like to put on it. Girls, what did we talk about tonight that we find in the garden? A wooden construct, a shed, a garden shed. What would you like? Glasses. Okay, glasses for the spud. Woo, 200 points. Very good, girls. Who can tell me something you might find in the garden shed you can push and it cuts to the grass? Ah, uh, lawnmower. Well done, boys. Nosey. I mean, nose. Yes. What do we have? 400. Woohoo! Brilliant. Girls, whenever we talked about the garden shed, what, what is it you put in the garden shed you can look out through that window? Yes, they don't all have windows, but the window helps the light to come in. What do you want? An ear. Okay, an ear for you. 300. Ooh, big numbers in this one. Boys, we talked about the, the, the back garden. What do children like to do in the back garden? They like to play. Yes, what do you want? A hand. Okay, it's a very interesting potato and it's worth 400 points. Boys are winning. Girls, what is it? Bo girls, what is it around the garden that, that divides you from your neighbour? It's called a... Pa perimeter or fence, that's right. Tongue. Need the tongue for tasting. Talking. You ever try to talk like your tongue? Ah, yes, one. Hundred. <laughs> Boys, whenever we think about the garden, what is it? What's it? What's a little thing, a little small brown thing beginning with S that you plant and becomes a flower or a vegetable? Seed. Well done. Right. What's up in there? It is a mouth. 100 points. Boys are still winning, but it's very close. Girls, whenever we talked about the garden, what was the first garden we read about in the Bible? The Garden of Eden. Yes, well done. Eyes. You need eyes behind the glasses. Woohoo! 300. Girls have slipped in the lead. Boys, what did Adam and Eve do whenever they disobeyed God? They brought what into the world? Sin. That's right. Hat. Yes. The whole head. <laughs> don't know what that is. 100. Right, we've got four left. Two each. Gir girls, whenever we were born with sin, what did, what did you call the garden that Jesus went into just before he was taken to the cross? The garden of Gethsemane. Wonderful. Shoes. Yes, you need to eat shoes to go for a walk. 100. Boys, what did the disciples do when Jesus asked, will you please pray for one hour? What did they do? They fell asleep at least twice. Moustache. You want a moustache? Okay. You see how it's coming together nicely? Right, I'm going to add these up and see what we need. Boys have got uh, four, five, eight, 1,200. And girls have got uh, four and four is eight, 1,000. So um, boys are 200 ahead and there's two left. Uh, girls, whenever Jesus died on the cross, did he stay dead or did he rise again the third day? He rose again the third day. Wonderful. Hand. What's the hand worth? Give us a wave. 
It's worth 200. Right, it's a draw. So boys, you just need one point to win. One point, and the boys win. So tonight we talked about the garden and the garden in the Bible, the garden of Eden, the garden of Gethsemane. What did they call the king? He loved to walk in his garden. The wisest man he ever lived, King Solomon. That's right, well done boys. One point, and if it's a minus, girls win. Zero, it's a draw, one point at least, boys win. Roll, play. Yes, boys are the winners. Boom, boom, ha, 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 ha. That was kind of easy. That was easy, well done. Right, we have a last song. Uh, this one. Just like the broken shed and needs repaired, everything we, we do, every time we do something wrong, remember God will forgive us. And some people go through life with regrets and remorse with something they've done wrong. Ask God to forgive you, apologize who you've done it to, and move on and enjoy your life. God wants us to enjoy our lives, but enjoy it with God. And the Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good. Let's pray. Then we're done. Don't forget, we're back. And Sunday for Sunday School and every day next week out and about with brand new uh, uh, videos for assembly and our youth talk is on tomorrow night. Time for teens. Let's pray. Father, bless the boys and girls. Thank you so much for every one of them. Well, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to go onto YouTube to share the Word of God, the wonderful gospel message that God loves His children and Jesus died on the cross to save them. And what a joy it is we can go through life with God. Bless them all, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. See you. Bye.